Morning, everybody. We'll give it a couple of minutes to make sure um, Facebook catches up. But today is uh, the next Make the Cut video. We're working on block 33 and 34. So I'm going to do those really quickly. And then I have um, the next row ooh, to add to our row, which I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, barring any catastrophes because they're working on the roof and they've been quite loud. And a few times I swear, I thought they were gonna fall through the ceiling. So let's hope, because right now they're not too, too loud. So we're gonna give it a try, okay? Oof, a little crazy in here. Okay, as usual, I've started working on the blocks. I'm gonna do it in reverse order. We're gonna work on 34 first because I have a half square triangle to work on. So let's get to it. Okay, whoops, doesn't look like you can see anything, huh? Oh, there we go. That's better. <laughs> Technology doesn't always work. But, okay, I've gone over this many times, but I'm going to keep on going over it, and hopefully it helps you. So, half square triangles. We're going to put two blocks, right sides together. You can draw a line, or in my case, most of the time I do not draw a line. I just use my quarter inch foot with a guide and put that right in the center of the corner here and keep my point on this side following this line and it'll be a quarter of an inch, following the quarter of an inch line on my mat. So you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch on one side of the line, turn it around and sew a quarter of an inch on the other side of the line. Now, this specific block calls for three half square triangles. You should have an extra half square triangle with the neutrals if you're doing the scissors from a previous block that we did not use. So you should only have to do two. And then you cut on the line and you'll have a half square triangle. Okay, let me just iron these real quick and we'll get done with this block. It is a crazy, crazy week. I have so much fabric coming in. It's unbelievable. I bit the bullet and bought a few kits of fabric for Kimberbell um, Main Street Celebration Bench Pillow. And, and I'm gonna put those up for sale today. Let's see. This one goes this way, and that one goes that way, and there is block 34. So all I'm going to do to put this together is I'm gonna to sew these three together, sew these two and these two together, and then put them together. It's no different than um, a nine patch, it's just not as many pieces. So we're making our rows, and then we put our rows together. What else? Let's see, we've got, God, so much fabric coming in. I'm gonna do a video later on tonight before I leave for um, all the fabric that I have coming in and came in yesterday. It's kind of crazy. Now, I'm gonna let you know, these half square, to half square triangles are bigger than you actually need. If you would like to square them up, by all means, go right ahead. I'm gonna work with them as they are, just because I can. I'm not recommending that, but 
you can if you know what you're doing. And all I did was center my full square inside my half square triangle, making sure the points line up and use the full square for my quarter of an inch. Yeah, we've got some paper coming in all week. I don't think there's been a day that I haven't had something delivered. It's kind of crazy. Today we've got, let's see, Halloween coming in, I believe. And tomorrow we have a whole bunch of fabric coming in from Benertex, including words of quilting, which includes two panels. Then Monday, I have, um, what do I have coming in on Monday? Monday, I have Banyan Batik's bandana is name of the line, and it's Patriotic Batik's, which is kind of cool. All right, now I'm going to sew these two together. This actually has to go that way. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I really do. Um, I'm just trying to give you options that aren't too costly because this is a great quote to shop in your stash. All the neutrals do not have to be the same neutral. It actually looks better, I think, when you use different neutrals. I'm Hoping next week, I have a couple of quilts that I have to put on there first, but I'm hoping next week I will have my completed make the cut um, quilt on the long arm and I can show you some fun stuff and some quilting. I have a couple of things I have to get finished first because. I have a feeling that quilt is going to be on the long arm for a while, so I don't want to, nothing worse than having to take a partially completed quilt off of a long arm and put it back later. It's just not fun. I don't have to do that, I'm, but I can show that. All right, there we go. Now we only have this seam to worry about and this seam here to worry about. And I have ironed my fabric towards this rectangle and towards these solid blocks here, which makes it easy because then my seams will set. You can nest them very, very simply. So again, this top seam is going that way. The bottom seam is going this way. That's what we call nesting the seams. And when they both line up, I put a pin on one side on an angle and come up the other seam. So I'm holding the seams together and then I'm gonna sew. By keeping the pin on an angle, I can start sewing up here, come down and actually stop with my needle down right at the seam before I have to actually pull the pin. And I've found in the past that it helps keep the seam aligned. Sometimes just the act of actually pulling the pin out will move your seam. And I try to keep my seams as neat as possible lifting my foot wherever I need to, to keep the fabric going the way I want it to. That's one side done. And now we're gonna do the other side.
And I think I've told you, I don't want to not think, I know I've told you before that I don't always cut my dog hair. Though. Very, very seldom do I. Um, I actually find they don't cause as much for me bulk as they do help me, help me keep my fabric um, from going into the sewing machine plate. And they actually help me line up my seams pretty easily. There we go. Oh, I have a little blip. Just a little one. All right. A little tuck in there. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but. Okay. I will have to fix that. All right, all I did was unsnip a few stitches on each side of this little pucker, iron it, and then just kind of resell it. Now I sew again with a eighth, uh, a scant quarter of an inch, okay? And this block is going to go that way. I sew with a scant quarter of an inch. What that means is my my blocks are going to be bigger than I actually need, which I'd rather that. They're not hugely bigger, but they're enough that I can square them all up. So I'm not too worried about um, the dog ears on the outside and things being just slightly wonky because I know I'm going to clean it up. That's block 34. Now we're going to work on block 33. And this is why I said we need, I was going to do it in reverse order because I've already done my half square triangles in this block. So this is really, really simple. It's nothing we haven't already done before. And it's a bunch of half square triangles and some solid blocks and it's an eye patch. Super, super simple. So all I'm going to do is put these together one row at a time and then put the rows together. And then we'll so our row onto our piece and we'll be done for this week. Don't forget, I will have a video tonight showing you all the lovely eye candy we've gotten. And I am going to chain piece these. What that means is I'm not gonna break my thread and I'm just gonna feed another pair in. And normally I have my cute little gadget, but it's in the other room to cut my threads from chain piecing. I swear, I have to get two and put two down here. One here and one in the other area. Because I keep forgetting where they are. They're all, it, it, where it is, it's always in the wrong spot. So today I'm going to have to cut with a scissor. Let me iron these real quick. There we go. Now I'm just gonna put these pieces on the rows and we'll sew the row together. Now, if there's something else you guys would like to learn or you have questions on something or you need some help, let me know. I can't guarantee that I'm gonna have a class or a video for everything, but if I can sneak a quick video in like I did Monday, just giving you some quick tips and tricks that I do with your work. Um, I will. I really like this quilt. This is a great stash quilt. 
Names. Hopefully, I put my scenes in the right place. It doesn't always work, but I try. This one needs to be changed. It's not too bad. Only one out of the scenes is wrong. I can deal with that. There we go. So now we're going to line up our seams and sew our rows together. Sure, where we need to be. Yeah, that one's off. All right, I don't like the way that looks. So we're going to have to do a little bit of finagling here. Or I am. I'm going to rip that out because it's just too far off. But you get the idea, okay? Then all you have to do is sew this one on. This seam is the one that I don't like. It's just too far. I didn't catch it correctly. I took the pin out too soon. See, not even I do boo-boos. Nobody is perfect. There is no such thing as perfect as far as I'm concerned. Okay, real quick, and then I've got to open and unlock the doors. Here are, is our next row. Now, I have not ironed my seams in between. Um, I find there's a couple ways you can do it. You can iron them and Try to make sure you've got all the seams going in the right direction. And I've found that it's almost impossible to make sure all the seams are going in the right direction. Okay, because there's a lot of them. So what I find is if I don't iron my seams on my new row that are coming, that I'm going to attach, I can easily fold them down where I want them to go. And then when I'm done, ironing uh sewing the row on i can go back and make sure i iron the seams the way that they've been sewn hope that makes sense so right now 
all I'm doing is everywhere I have a matching seam, I'm going to pin. Most of this is not going to be noticeable because it's all neutral. The places where I really want you to pay attention is where the colored fabrics are. That's where it's going to make a it's going to show up much better or much easier if you make a mistake and you don't line them up. Okay? So you got to pay special attention to those seams. Looks like I got one little seam that's starting to come apart. This is why it's really important, especially on brothers and baby lock machines, to make sure you do a back stitch before and after. Because they will come apart, especially with the amount of time it takes to put this quilt together. There aren't a lot in this row that I have to worry too much about matching up, which is great. And most of my seams are going pretty much exactly the way I want them to. There's only a couple of small ones that I may have to iron the opposite way that they were originally ironed, but that's okay. It's literally impossible for you to have a uh, quilt this big and this amount of work not to have to have it's impossible almost impossible to have all your seams going exactly the right way if you have can more power to you i haven't figured out on this quilt and this is the second time i'm doing it how to get that done it just doesn't work. I've done it a few different ways and I'm still running into a few issues. But I'm okay with that. Most of the quilt is going to be neutrals. So you're going to see the shadow of the seams no matter what you do. It's, for, it's impossible for you not to with the amount of seams that you have and the amount of neutral fabrics. It will be fine. And it seems like we're doing a lot of pins. Normally I don't do that many, but I really want these seams to line up as much as possible the first time. So I will pin each seam. And I'm only pinning the seams that line up. So there's no seams here, but there's a bunch of seams here. No big deal. The next seam to line up would be where the blocks end. All right, that is it. And now I'm just going to sew. The magic is when you take all your pins out and see how well you did with your seams. And as you can figure, because I've already done it once or twice, doesn't always work. Sometimes, unfortunately, I have to use Jack the Ripper. If you're okay with the way it looks, 
When I put the rows together, I am using quarter of an inch seam. When I put the blocks together, most of the time I am using a scant quarter. That's the only downfall of using so many pins. You get stuck eventually. Try not to get blood on your quilt. And I never sew over my pin, ever. There's too many things that can happen when you do. I think this is going to get done just in time because it sounds like the roofers are starting to. Which is a great thing. After I close tonight, I will give me a little bit of time to get things put together, but I should have a fairly lengthy video of all the new beautiful fabrics. All right. Let's see how I did. Good. Good. Not bad. The biggest one that I'm concerned about is where the colored fabric is. And I think it looks pretty good. There we go. All right, next week we will work on blocks 35 and 36. If you guys have any questions, comments, like I said, if there's anything you want me to show you, um, by all means, let me know. I hope you have a great day, everybody. Bye.